Well, I was walking around the nursery this morning and today is the uh, 28th of February. And although we are not quite into spring, in the UK at this time of the year, these early flowering prunus, this is a type of prunus, this is the blackthorn um, or the uh, blackthorn, sometimes people call it the slow. Uh, There's a beautiful plant with these lovely flowers. It belongs to the prunus family and it flowers on the wood that's produced in the previous year. This was a very tall tree that I've been growing, but for some reason the branches are too high. I've never been very happy with it. You see it buds back from the old wood as well. So that's a lovely tree just on its own over there. So let me see what I can do with this tree. And uh, as I say, I was just walking through the nursery this morning and I saw this plant in bloom. And usually when it's in bloom, everyone takes notice of it. But when it's not blooming, no one ever sees it. But it's always nice to have it as a bonsai when it's ready. So let me see what I can do. I always believe that there is no such thing as an impossible bonsai. This is only like what we call a semi-trained tree. And we tried to make it a broom tree, but a lot of the branches didn't uh, grow properly. So I've more or less given up on this tree. But I can make it into something more interesting. So let's take it out of this pot. We use a lot of the mica pots as training pots just to make sure that the roots continue to grow shallow. And let us see what we can make with this. I, I dare say I will probably be able to get several trees out of it. But how do you think I'm gonna get several trees? Let's have a look. Okay, take it out. Now, this tree has the makings of a nice literati and it is too thick and too spindly for my liking so let's see what I can do I'm going to do something a bit drastic because the trunk is so thick I'm inclined to split it down the middle and for that purpose I brought my lovely Chinese cleaver. I use this for chopping duck and chop, chopping chicken. I will disinfect it after I've used this because I want to want to cut my food after doing this. But this is the only useful tool that I have. I don't think an axe would even be as effective. So chopping it like that is not going to get me anywhere but I will assist it with the hammer. the cold chisel. As you did when you were asking, is this how you prepare your food? The other day we broke our axe, so I don't have an axe handy.
hear it creaking, which is a good sign. It's almost like a metal workshop. After all, we're doing sculpture with trees. I'm trying to split it down the middle to get two trees out of this. I'm going to film the entire process just to show you that I'm not doing any sleight of hand or jiggly pokery. There you are, can you see it splitting? Look at that. Look at that beautiful split down the middle. Let me get rid of some of these bits. Splitting. I don't damage this cleaver. The cleaver is probably worth more than the tree. I'm almost at the bottom of the tree now.
think I should have been a blacksmith. There you are. I've now split the tree. I've got two trees out of that. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Two very nice trees and natural shari and driftwood. There you go, one tree there and another tree here with that beautiful root. And if we get uh, a couple of drum pots, if you can ask my colleagues to bring a couple of drum pots and we will have made some nice bonsai. I'm just going to lop some of these branches. I'm not going to uh, make some nice sort of gins with these bits because they look a bit too straight and just chopped off. So let's do some tearing of the wood. natural driftwood there. Okay, so that's one I've done so far. Now let's see what we can do with this one. So the front is obviously going to be the torn side. And this is a bit much. I don't think I need that thick piece. I work. Hoi! I feel that this top part is a bit too thick. So I'm going to reduce the thickness of the top. Just brute force. I'm going to try and repair this a little bit. This is very heavy. Stop it from splitting more. There's lots of roots there. So I think we need really small drum pot. The smaller ones. The 
this drum pot is rather large. Uh, let me just put it in and see what. I'm not trying different drum pots. This one I think is too small. And the mica pot that I had in mind is probably a bit too large. But nevertheless, I will still use it. I'll still use it and see what it looks like. I can always, at a later date, change it to another one. As I said, if you look closely here, this little beauty here, such a beautiful curve, should the tree die, I could make a small bonsai with just this part. So this would be very interesting. But for the time being, I'll try and preserve this as much as possible. I may even put a screw at the back to tighten it up. And uh, I will then see what the outcome is. I will just tighten it a little more. fill it with soil and then wire this down so the next stage will be filling with soil I won't bore you with that now meanwhile let's look at the other tree the other tree we've got that far and if we are going to try to use a mica pot again see that part fits there but this root is a bit too big so I may have to cut that root off so I won't use the chopper I'll try and use an old saw These are all our old blunt saws, which we use for cutting roots. Let me see if I can get another one. No, that's no good. Let me try another one. So as you can see, we don't use anything sophisticated these are all what we call agricultural carpentry tools which any person can get hold of. Rather than waste good saws to cut soil, I don't cut good, good saws. bit. It's got a bit of root. I don't want to waste that. I think that fits now. So I will tie this in the pot. So we've got this in this drum pot which as I said is a bit uh, large for the tree but let it grow and it'll grow stronger hopefully more roots and then we'll deal with it again. Meanwhile I just want to wire this nice branch to give it more character so I just link it to that little twig there oopsie I'll have to link it to the main trunk I suppose not long enough let's try again even I make mistakes sometimes so I like to show you all the mistakes I make as well judging the wrong length of wire okay let's take it from there
Oh, since bringing this tree in already, these flowers have started dropping. So these flowers have been blooming for about two weeks. And I've been meaning to do this tree for a long time, but anyway, you still have the fun of seeing me do it. a little more. I may have to put a bit of glue or screw to screw it in and let it heal. But I think this tree will be okay because the cambium is well alive. So pity the flowers have dropped off, no matter. So, With a little part here that should bloom as well. So this is going to be the literati of the future. Even this angle is quite nice. So that is that one done. Now let's look at the other one. This one has got the majority of the trunk still intact and I have done literally nothing to this tree except split it. even smarten it up with moss or anything so I put it on a slight angle like this and no wiring nothing look at it it's got all the characteristics of a lovely literati I could thin this a little bit with a bit of carving carve that and a front shari and this is what literati is all about trees that struggle to survive against all the storms and that is the true character of the literati so from one tree I produce two so the object of this exercise is to show you if you have a thick fat ugly trunk that you can't do anything with you can split it and make it into two thinner trunks and get two very nice trees out of it so I hope you enjoyed doing this so this is what we have done with my cleaver and now I'm going to take my cleaver back and uh, clean it up because I've got to uh, cut a duck this evening. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this one too.